This is called a call up. Yeah, it is indeed. Nailed it. What is up, everybody, from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome on in to The Call-Up. I am Susanna Collins, joined, as always, by my beautiful, fabulous co-host, Jillian Sackovitz. Um, we are back in our, back in our basements. You shouldn't have. I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I kind of miss uh, Geodis Park as our AT&T 5G virtual studios. I feel like that was a superior backdrop, but you know, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at being back. It's great to great to see you again, even virtually. I prefer um, it in person. But yeah, I I miss I miss the smell of the fresh grass. I know the, the sunlight. Something about it from our live shows in Nashville or L.A. I even miss the crane that was going down the concourse. <laughs> I miss every part of it. Man, but we just che we checked a lot of boxes. Um, our guest today the makes, last up, few weeks. makes up for all of You them. guys, this is so exciting. We have um, a guy who is truthfully having um, a legitimate MVP caliber season, and that is Georgie Mihailovic of CF Montreal. Five goals, four assists this year. Um, he has just been, he has been so much fun to watch. And the conversation that we had with him um, was unexpected, a little wild, a little spicy. I feel like we learned uh, a lot about this, uh, this 23 year old, but um, definitely, definitely worth your time. He's, he's a fascinating character. I will tell you, he's a Chicago native. And um, I was devastated when he left the Chicago fire because you could see it. You could see it for a, a long time, the quality that this kid has. And he came up through the Chicago Fire Academy, through that whole system. Um, so I was I was gutted when he signed for Montreal, but I'm also so happy to see him flourishing and doing well. If you love something, you, you let, let it go. go. You let it float. You I let did. it spread. spread. I sure his, did. Spread his wings internationally. I know. And I look, know. it's paid off for him. It has Take paid off. Time now for our AT&T 5G call to the field. 23-year-old Georgie Mihailovic, the American midfielder for CF Montreal, already in the MLS MVP conversation. Four goals and four assists on the season so five, far. Five. Five goals. What'd I say? Four. Darn You're it. already shortchanging, Georgie. Five goals. Five. Does, it, does it help that five was written down? I just read it incorrectly. Five goals and four assists on the season so far. Uh, welcome, Mr. Five Goals. Ah, thanks. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know it is, Georgie. We're off to so, a great start. As per usual. Uh, as we head north of the border to Montreal, it's only natural for us to break the ice. So, Georgie, get ready for a round of rapid-fire questions. Okay. Uh, first off, Georgie, what did you do with your first big paycheck? I bought a new laptop, a new Mac, because uh, I was I was still in I was uh, I started online college, and that that's did such all. a responsible I was answer. Like, that's so sensible. Oh no, the way yeah, I, yeah I, I bought a a new computer and started online school, and then that ended about a month later. So then I just had a new laptop. Good for you! Wow, good answer. Okay, um, Georgie, what is your your go to off season? beverage like you don't really have to worry about training the next day you can let loose a little bit what are you drinking i like arnold palmer's oh yeah, yeah. very also, underrated also a responsible answer uh this off se this off season where do you want uh to go visit where's on your bucket list um maybe somewhere in europe like the alps or something Ooh. yeah Love that. Love that. Um, what is your favorite MLS city to play in? Uh, Chicago. Aww. Hometown. Uh, yeah. Georgie, when's the last time you were nervous? I get a bit anxious before every game, so I guess that counts. You know, a little bit of nerves. Yeah. That's Maybe good. Yes yesterday when I was trying to speak French in class. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous because I don't know how to say some words. <laughs> That's amazing. We're going to get to that in just a bit. Um, Georgie, who um, who would you say that your soccer idol is? At the moment or like when I was younger? Oh, both. both yeah. Um, at the moment, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I mean, he's the best. Uh, I he, hate it. It hurts me to say that, but you can't go wrong with him. Um, yes. I don't know. Maybe when I was younger, it varied. Like Thiago, Modric, Iniesta. Yes. Iniesta. Great Just answer. <laughs> Uh, when was the last time, or who has left you the most starstruck? Like meeting? Yes. Um, Messi? Uh, Messi? Yeah, in Copa, when Copa America was here, and back in, when was that, 2016? Yeah. Okay. Was Copa America in the States 2016? 2016. Yeah, our academy in Chicago, was a couple of us trained with the Argentina national team uh, up at UIC, and... It was amazing. So, like, <laughs> there's maybe six of us training with the, the, the Argentine national team. And it was, How'd you guys do? What was that interaction? Like, what was your interaction with Messi? Uh, well, it was speechless. So I was <laughs> kind of answering that question. Um, no, we were there just, like, helpers. Like, they were doing a possession game, and we would just be around the side, like, trying to keep the ball and, you know, bumpers, stuff like that. Oh, my God. I'm starstruck now. Jill, we're one degree away from, from Messi now mm -hmm. because we've talked to Georgie. So yeah. this is like a feather in our cap as well. So thank you for that, Georgie. Wow, that is a very cool story. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, um, well. Okay, if you weren't a soccer player, Georgie Mihailovic, what would you be? Oh, I don't like answering this. Come on. And a, Probably an astronomer. Oh, what? Do you have like a telescope? I have it in the in Chicago. But I Is a telescope even the right uh, it's a telescope. tool? Okay, it's a telescope. And, uh, <laughs> I have one. Uh, I just, I'm just fascinated by space. I don't know. It's really weird. I'm, that's like, so YouTube and, you know how like when you watch YouTube videos, like your recommended video, it's all space. It's all space stuff? Wait, did you ever go to the planetarium in Chicago? Yeah. That was like one of my favorite field trips ever. It's yeah, fascinating. Nice. You guys are on fire. Absolute fire right now, unbeaten in your last seven games. Five of those were wins. Um, I just, you know, kind of after, I guess, a, a slow start to this season, but I know you guys had CCL to, to think about as well. You guys have just come on so strong. It all seems to be coming together. How much fun is this team having right now? Uh, a whole bunch of fun, a whole bunch of fun. And it's always, it's always great when you're winning. Um, and we just have to have to try to keep it this way as long as we can because the season is long and we're going to hit a, a rough spot. It's it's normal. Um, and when that happens, it's how quickly can you react to that situation. Uh, I think uh, it was very tough for us at the beginning playing these two competitions. Um, it was my first time playing Champions League, so it was mm. my first experience. And, and going down to Mexico twice um, was was a great experience as well. And, and once we got out of that and we kind of found our rhythm, um, things were, were much more fluid, easier, I'd say, and not having a game in the, in the middle of the week for four consecutive weeks. So that was, that was nice. We got a little bit of break as well. Um, but yeah, we're in a good moment and, and the team is playing really well. The whole team is contributing, not just myself. Um, so we have, to give, we have to give a lot of credit to the whole team. Uh, and hopefully it just keeps going like that. Your team videographer, also um, MLS legend and friend of the show, Kai Kamara, has <laughs> been going really wild on social media since he arrived in Montreal. P.S. I laughed out loud to your comment on Kai's video filter choice. Um, not giving you the best glow. I know you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on, Kai. Pick a good filter for everybody. Oh, these filters, man. I don't, I'm not that white. <laughs> You know, you're you're killing it in 23, and then you've got this 37-year-old Kai rolling in here. Why has he worked in this Montreal locker room and on the pitch? Um, no, just just because he has that experience uh, playing for so many teams, you know, he knows the league, and we're we're a fairly young roster, uh, and and we needed a guy like him to just come in and almost almost be the father of us and. It's not really a joke. It's kind of serious because we're young and um, we haven't maybe experienced certain things that he has when he has played many times. Um, and and when he came, it was I, I talked to a lot of guys around the league asking how he is. And, and they're just like, just wait, just wait and see. And I'm like, OK, I'll wait and see. And <laughs> when he came and just his, his energy, his vibes, his, oh, his, his demeanor is just is exactly what we needed at the time. 
fun fact, when we were doing our Atlanta United pregame show a couple of weeks ago, Kai Kamara shirtless stopped by our set and was just like, he was, he's one, was at the time one shy of uh, Jaime Moreno's uh, fourth place on the all-time scoring list for MLS. And he just stops by so casually and he goes, oh, you guys are here to watch me make history today? Like, <laughs> that's just, that's kind of what you need and what, and what you love to say. So anyway, I was just happy to see that nothing's changed. In no, he likes to be shirtless. <laughs> and shirtless. Okay. <laughs> Kai Kamara. Oh, man. I think he, he did meant tell us at one point that he wants to be an actor, like, after his playing days are over. And I was like, He yeah, acted that, on our show. I can see that. Yeah. Or like, dance. I can... I can see that. I can just uh, an entertainer in general seems to seems to fit for him. Um, okay, Georgie, let's talk about this um, this incredible season that you're having right now. Five goals. We're not shortchanging you this time. Five goals, four assists. You've played in all ten games so far. Um, <laughs> It's hard to avoid the uh, the MVP chatter that's that's starting to to happen, um, but it's out there, and I'm I'm sure you're probably aware of it. But um, for you personally, what has been what's been working for you this season in 2022? Um, in terms of scoring, I I had a, I really took a a long look at my shooting situation from last year scored four goals out of maybe 60 shots and 15, 16 were on target out of 60 shots. And I just thought to myself, this, this can't be, this is not how you're going to be a goal scorer in any, in any league. And that's kind of the, the main thing I try to focus on is yes, I, I get in good spots. I take shots. Um, first thing is get the ball on goal. Then you're always gonna give yourself a chance. Uh, and then second is, is be way more composed in that situation. And now um, when I started playing, you know, 2017, 2018, I was more of like midfielder, number eight. So I didn't really find myself around the box quite often. And, and now that I'm putting myself in these situations time and time again, I feel way more comfortable in and around the box. And, and luckily, l- lucky enough, um, this year I'm being way more clinical and, and helping the team win. It's just interesting because watching you, um, I mean, yeah, you have been scoring more goals this year, but it's it's the the movement and the way that you create for the other guys around you, and um, you know, finding space, making those those runs. How much? I mean, do you is it is goal scoring like the ultimate goal for you, or is it like you know, creating, being the creator of of those chances? What do you what what gratifies you more in a in a uh, soccer sense? I say it all the time is I I prefer assisting versus scoring. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's I, I just prefer it. I prefer yeah. it. And last year, you know, sixteen assists. Um, it, it really felt good. It really felt good. And I was second behind Hill, and I wanted to be first. Um, but but I love being the guy that just makes the final pass, creating the chance. And and in terms of my movement, it's just I think it comes down to how much I watch watch soccer in general and also watch the team that we're going against and and studying where, where can I make a move to to kill the back line. Um, and, and I'd rather take a lot of, a lot more shots from inside the box than outside the box. Uh, so I try to make my movement as much as I can inside the box. So you're a student of the game. Like, if you're not watching your opponent, your upcoming opponent, like, what are you watching? What leagues are you watching? What are you tuning into? Um, well, the bad thing about my French class is it starts at three on on Tuesdays. <laughs> That's okay. Champions League, and for four for four weeks in a row, I haven't been paying attention to French. I've been just watching Champions League, but but no, I watch I watch all kinds of leagues: it, the Serie A, Bundesliga, the Premier League, La Liga, as much as I can. If there's a game on. I'm watching it, um, and you know, especially within the league, you know, we play for some reason. MLS decided to put all our games at three, four p.m. for the start of the season. Uh, we haven't played under the lights yet, so I get I get back to my house around six, seven, and like, there's another MLS game, so I'm just putting the game on. Um, I was curious why Montreal keeps getting all the four p.m. Eastern games. I mean, I don't anyway, know. for an, another time. I don't but- know, maybe because it's been cold here and they want us playing in the sun, so. Oh, I'll look at it half full. That would make okay. sense. I would take that. Uh, you know, shifting from assists to goals, uh, I was reading on CBS. You said to Heath Pierce that Greg Berhalter, coach of the national team, said to you at January camp that he needs to see goals. How much of that stuck with you as you approached and attacked this season? A uh, whole lot. Just because um, there's a there's a World Cup at the end of the year, and he's the head coach. 
So he, he's um, it's Facts. The, the, World <laughs> Cup, the World Cup is is something that motivates me, um, and just every game I play and and when something when when that's the kind of tip that the coach and the national team is is telling me, then I have to really do my best to to achieve that. And that's it's not really it's not something I think about. I don't go into every game like I got to score, I got to score. I still I like to play free. I like to I like things to come naturally to me. Um, but it's more of of being that when when that situation comes, just all right. I gotta I gotta put the ball on the goal because you never know what's gonna happen at the end of the year. Well, I mean, especially a World Cup. We we all know that um, you you need depth. You know, you need a, a, a deep roster um, when you're competing on that international stage. And, and there has been a, a lot of, of talk about, like I said, like your MVP caliber season, um, a lot of eyeballs on you, p- potential interest from from overseas. Like, have have you had any more conversations with Greg Berhalter? You know, like, has he been in touch? I'm sure he's watching um, how well you've been playing for Montreal this year. I mean, have, have you had any further conversations with him about it? Um, I haven't, I haven't recently. I know he's watching just, just because I know that he watches a ton of soccer and it's kind of his job is to watch us all. Um, <laughs> I know he's watching and, and I can't, I, I, I can't really focus on that because if I think too much on that then it's going to get in my head and, and I won't be able to play free, but, but yeah, I mean, um, we'll see what happens. Um, the, the most I can do is, is worry about how I play. To the casual fan that maybe just turned on a game, they think, oh my gosh, where's he from? Um, but as you know, our more hardcore fans know, that you're an internet U.S. international, former homegrown for the Chicago Fire. Um, so let's get into that a little bit. Um, can you tell us about your life? You grew up in the Chicago area playing for your father's team. Yeah. So, uh... Per Wikipedia. Oh yeah, Wikipedia. Okay, nice. This is our uh, research. Yeah. Now I was born in Florida. This is great. Uh, moved to Chicago when I was two. Um, yeah. I, oh, not Chicago, about a suburb. But I'm gonna say I'm mm-hmm. from Chicago. It's a suburb. What suburb? It's called Lamont. Yeah, it's, nobody knows. Jesus. I'm familiar. Downers That's Grove native. Asked. Downers Grove. Oh yeah. <laughs> Downers Grove, like neighbor. <laughs> we are literally neighbors. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, Come cool. on, George. Oh, yeah. oh, Chicago yeah. is near here. You didn't read our Wikipedias before the show? <laughs> no. Well, we good news. We don't have Wikipedia. No. Okay, well, I'm going to change that. Yeah, I was born in Florida, moved to Le Mans <laughs> when I was two. Um, yeah, my dad coached me growing up until I was about 13, 14. Then I joined the Chicago Fire Academy. Played Academy for about two, three years until they called me to the first team. So I was just training with the first team and then did that for about a year, year and a half. And I uh, signed my first homegrown deal. It's just crazy because I, I another thing that we do ahead of these interviews, Georgie, is we do a deep dive on your Instagram because, you know, I feel like that's where we find a lot of good nuggets. Um, and there were yeah. some incredible pictures that you've posted of you. Literally, you look like you're probably like 11 or 12 years old uh, playing for the Chicago Fire Academy. Wow. Um, you want to hear, there's a, incredible. I, gotta, I think I got to say one story. Yes, please. please. About who I owe probably the most credit to in my career. Her name is Abby Scoopin, and I don't know if there's – is there, like, a, a security thing on this? Like, can I say in her name? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, of course. No, Abby understand. will love it. She'll uh, be fine. All right, Abby Scoopin, she was my my calculus teacher in high school, um, junior year. So what year was that? 16, 17? Yeah. Um, her class – so in my high school, there was a block schedule. So there was a, a four classes a day and then every other day. Um, her class was from – 11 to 1. And that was the exact time that the first team trained. And I hope I, I hope this story doesn't get my school in trouble. Um, <laughs> she Absolutely allowed, not. She, she allowed me to miss the whole class because she also played soccer in college. Mm. So like, I told her, hey, like, oh, my God, this is a tough time. I'm a junior, <laughs> but I'm probably going to sign my homegrown deal. Like, the club wants me to train every day from – and the training starts at 11 – and I'm going to miss. So she's like, yeah, you can miss it. Just, you know, you got to do good on your test. And I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah. This is she amazing. Left. She let me. It was great. It was great. But like w- w- with the foresight that, that Abby had, because let's be she honest. She believed in you. I took yeah, calculus. I- let me, how many times have I used 
whatever calculus knowledge I have retained, like, I'll tell you zero, like, yeah. no, like you are now killing it in professional soccer, Georgie Mihailovic. So I love yeah. that you just gave Abby a shout out. That is, <laughs> and you went and got the teaser. work, you went and got the work done to pass the tests just the yeah. other night on inside the NBA, Charles Barkley admitted he never went to class at Auburn. Right. So oh. it's okay. You and Chuck. It yeah, all paid off. It was a really weird year that year, just because when I, when I did show up, it yeah. was a shock to everybody because, Oh, he's back. So Where you were the Charles Barkley of your junior class. I guess, I guess. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love that so much. So then did you, are you just really smart and you can just go home and teach yourself calculus? Is that how that panned out? No. Uh, so then how'd you pass the me. test? She helped me a little bit, okay? Like what a good teacher. Yeah, Personal teacher. Listen, listen. Yeah, I, I love this. Say thanks. Like you can send her a you can send her a gift now. That's that a really great what was it. her last name? Abby what? Scoopin. Abby Scoopin. Miss Scoopin. We'll go with. We love you. Way to go. That's a good teacher right there. But it is a good teacher. So like having all that experience in Chicago where, you know, that's kind of where you grew up, you went through the academy and then, you know, all of a sudden you find yourself north of the border in in Montreal, which is a fantastic city. It's actually, I think it's probably my favorite MLS city to like go to, like to travel to. I love it. Um, but what, how was that tough? Was that tough basically kind of like saying goodbye to sort of what you what you know, what you were comfortable with and spreading your wings? It was, it was more tough leaving my family, uh, yeah. leaving friends. Um, of course, it was tough leaving the club that, since I could remember, I always went to games watching with, with my dad in the stands and when they were playing out in Naperville and then Soldier Field and then, you know, in Bridgeview. So I see three different stadiums, three different, you know, where they play. So I grew up a, a huge supporter of Chicago Fire and, and then you end up playing for the team that you support. It's, it's a dream. Um, and then, and then when I made the decision to leave, it was tough. It was tough, but but it was it was also a, a happy happy time too because I'm I'm experiencing something new. Uh, I'm experiencing something that I have no idea what can come out of it. So the it's almost like the unknowns was what's what what was more attractive, um, just because you don't I didn't know what I was going to get myself into here. And, and looking back, I mean, in hindsight, it's it's, a, it's the best decision I made uh, coming here and all. When I when I first came here, I brought my car and I forgot it was in kilometers. So, <laughs> car, I drove the car from the airport back to my house and it said 100 on the on the side of the road and started driving 100 miles an hour. Oh, hey! Hour, so, no, coming here. Georgie like, Mihailovic is in Montreal. <laughs> Let's Hotel. put Mihailovic over here. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's great. It was great. Um, uh, I I wouldn't change it for for nothing. You know, it's very similar to what Alex Muell told us in Nashville, coming up through the Red Bulls Academy and, you know, being mm. a Manhattan boy, that kind of leaving his comfort zone was what he needed, you know, professionally. So it's it's good to hear. I, I have to ask you a question going back to your name, because I have a slightly complicated last name, but not like yours. When you make a dinner reservation or you're giving <laughs> your name at Starbucks, what do you go with? Um, like, do you go all in, like, you're going to learn, I'm going to spell Georgie Mihailovich over the phone right now, or do you like have a pseudo name that you go with that's no, easier? I just, I just say Georgie. And then how do you spell oh, it? G-E-O-R-G-I-E. Mm -hmm. so, and your parents, uh, who's, I read Macedonian and Serbian descent. Who's what, where does the name come from? My dad is Serbian. So the, the Mihailovich is Serbian. And then my mom is Macedonian. What a combo. Here Great that. combo. Love that. Um, Georgie, I had a chance to, the, the last time I saw you in person was actually in Munich. This was in 2008. Casual. Casual <laughs> for Bastian Schweinsteiger. You remember you were. <laughs> I was there. I was there. I did a feature on the whole Bastian Schweinsteiger like tribute match. And you guys were there to play in this friendly against Bayern, I mean, it was just nuts. That, that whole experience was crazy. Like at Allianz, it was it was um, absolutely incredible. But when when Bastian Schweinsteiger retired, um, again, another IG nugget that we found. Um, you said that he kind of like took you under his wing. Um, and I'm just curious to about like your relationship with him, how it developed and and what you learned from him, because it's I mean, you've, you're you having the opportunity to play with like literal like football legends um what was that like what were your takeaways oh it was very nerve-wracking at first because 
it was my first year too. Uh, I was like, oh, I, this is what I'm getting myself into. Okay, this, this is coming. Now I signed, and then two or three months later, it was announced that he was coming. I was like, wow, I don't even know how I'm going to act. I was I'm supposed to be in high school right now, uh, and then this guy's coming, and I'm going to share a locker room with him. So an idol like that. No, it's um, he's very, very outgoing. I think that's just the German mentality, just full of energy and and excitement and joking and things like that. But uh, it's it's the, the simple things that I've I've been able to learn uh, in a short period of time from him was was amazing. And I was just an American, uh, 17, 18 year old trying to do my best, you know, following him around. Just maybe he's talking to someone else, but I'm, maybe I'm eavesdropping. And what's he saying? Like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I'll use that. Um, but, but it was sad when he retired. We played in Orlando, I remember. Our last, his last game was in Orlando. I think we won 5-1, to 4-1. So it was a good send-off. But, but yeah, that experience also in, in Munich was, was extraordinary, as, as you remember. You know, 80,000 people watching just the game for this guy. He was for Schweinsteiger as well. So, you know, when, when you see that kind of following and what he means to, to not only Munich, but to Germany and to the whole world of soccer is, is, is amazing. Have you stayed in touch? Unfortunately not. I think he changed his number. <laughs> Damn. Superstars do that every, every once in a while. Um, yeah, yeah. Rude. Like, rude. But Georgie, we want to give you a little credit before we let you go. Um, your PR staff, and we saw on Twitter that you have been taking French lessons, like you mentioned, and credit to you. What's the secret to learning a second language? Because we're always trying to find out on this show as, um, as I hammer away at my own Spanish. Well, I, I said this before uh, at the beginning is our classes are at three and last three weeks there's a like soccer game on, so it's been really okay. tough. Uh, but but you're, do, you're learning it, so obviously it's working. Uh, I could be learning more. Yesterday we had another class and there was no soccer on. And I really, that was my best class. I okay. Swear. I think okay. I could tell from my teacher, I was actually paying attention too. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's good. I think what helps me is that I'm in a French area too. So I'm speaking. I'm just like what I learned in the class, I'm just going to try to speak it the next day in training. And, and everything, every time I go up to someone, you know, how do I say, oh, today's a nice day. And they'll be like, oh, aujourd'hui, un bel journée. I'll be like, okay. Sounds That's good to beautiful. me. Beautiful. Good pronunciation. Bon pronunciation. Pronunciation. That's what my French is. Okay, good. Close. Très bien. Très bien. Uh, Georgie, um, this has been so much fun. Before we let you go, I just want to ask one more question. For for you, um, for the team, what's, uh, how will you define success in 2022 for this club and yourself? So both individual and a team? Yeah. Um, well, as a team, the Canadian Cup, I think that's the expectation every year from this club. Um, I don't, are we the team that has won that the most? Um, okay, yeah, Toronto. Okay, we're going to be <laughs> Toronto, Toronto this year. Toronto is, yeah, <laughs> barely okay. Canada. Here nor that's there. barely Canada. Right. So definitely now Canadian Cup after learning that. Um, I think playoffs for sure that's mm -hmm. the objective of every MLS team but but for us you know we were so close last year when when so little was expected um so i think you know playoffs a, a trophy again in the canadian cup is is successful and and you know when playoffs start as you guys know this in this league anybody can be anybody in playoffs so you never know what could happen um but yeah for an individual um not just I don't. I don't know if I have a set number of goals and assists, but at this rate, maybe ten and ten. Oh, okay. All right, George. Um, let's put it out there. Let's put it out into the universe. Oh no, no, no! I don't need someone. <laughs> okay. I don't need more eyes on me. Yeah, I don't need more eyes on me. Get behind. All right, Georgie. Well, thank you so yeah. much. This was so fun. Uh, we hope we didn't scare you away, and we hope now you are a fan of the call up. Okay. <laughs> now I'll, I'll probably. Like keep watching. Definitely subscribing, writing a review, <laughs> all those things. It's like, like sure, Lady Finley. Yeah. <laughs> here for this. Well, we are here for seeing the coaches across Major League Soccer that I think are trying to break our third of the way season uh, power rankings that we're mm -hmm. going to get into soon when we update our top 10 coaches. <laughs> um, 
who are the best dressed in our eyes in the league. And there were there's some guys making moves, Susanna Collins. So to mm-hmm. celebrate um, week 10 this past weekend, we want to talk about a couple guys who kind of maybe cracked cracked our radars a bit. Who do you have for me, sister? Okay, so... This one, um, I, I, it's kind of a, it's probably a little bit unexpected, but um, I was watching the uh, Charlotte FC match and Miguel Angel Ramirez. And I think I had mentioned this to you when we did our power rankings before. I had seen him in Charlotte in person and it was his shoes. Like he was wearing these Prada shoes that were just phenomenal. So as you saw in that little clip, on the sidelines this past weekend, he was wearing this like, very oversized t-shirt and it looked, you know, it's a very casual look, but then it had this, um, this sort of like monogram here. It said FG. And I was like, that is an expensive, that is an expensive t-shirt. I was like, I just knew it because it was kind of that Mm. like very like oversized look that's super in right now. Our producer Galena like kind of nailed it. She was like, it looks like he bought it at an urban outfitter, but it's really like super expensive. And guess what? She was right. I Googled this t-shirt. Okay. Tell me a thousand dollars. Not a thousand dollars. It was not a thousand dollars, but it was. It's called Fear of God, and it's two hundred and fifty dollars at Can I ask Saks Fifth Avenue. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Like Why? this guy is paying two hundred and fifty bucks for a T-shirt, and he's rocking it on the sidelines. And I was just like, okay, I see you, Miguel on help. I see that, you. I see what you're doing that's here. Picking it up a notch. You don't. Managers can be in the team athleisure wear. Um, mm-hmm. They also can be in like a suit or like a, a, a nice um, business casual outfit. But we haven't seen one rocking the burlap sack t-shirt look. I just want to know in the universe. This is kind of a question for everybody. <laughs> why are giant designer t-shirts back? I remember, they are designer logos was a yes. thing your bag. This that. absolutely and then it kind of disappeared. And I was I was happy. Mm-hmm. But it's mm-hmm. back. It is I'm back. Like, why is it back? It is back. And it's and, and it's so bulky. You know, it's almost like shapeless. Size, and that's why and that's why I noticed it because a he's kind of a t-shirt. he's a he's a fairly tall guy. And this thing was like it was like swimming on him. And I was like, well, that's a look. Like that is a look. Like you are wearing that oversized intentionally. Mm. And I just knew I was like, that is an expensive t-shirt. Like and I was right. If I showed up to work in a giant t-shirt, I would <laughs> love to think I'd look cool, but I'd look like I was still in my pajama tee. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So are you here for are you here for I am. I'm here. What I'm coach, here. What coach I'm here for? I can't think of many other coaches that could pull that off. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine Brian Schmetzer in a giant ginormous oh, sleeping. Oh team? my god. I would I mean, I would die. Like, can we like photoshop I need somebody to photoshop this? Because <laughs> I will die. The, the answer is that Ronnie D. Like I'm going through, I can't picture anyone. I know, I know. I'm at, the next guy to try it though would be Jimmy C. Listen, let's not put it past Jimmy C. Yeah, that let's would not. Be very, let's that not. Would but yes, no, I am here for it. I'm here for it because uh, it's different. He's mixing it up. Okay. Well, mine was, and this may have happened in the past. Like maybe you know, God forbid, I was paying attention to other things at a game. Um, this past weekend, I may have experienced my first costume change. Um, yeah, from a manager. Oh. Kicking it up a notch. tell. As you know, um, <laughs> I was covering Atlanta United Chicago Fire, so that's kind of where my eyes were keyed into. But sure. Gonzalo Pineda, as they always do, showed up in the matching suits that they all wear when they enter the stadium off the bus yep. uh, with his iconic coffee cup. And then he reemerged with an outfit change oh. on the sidelines, Susanna. And my gut reaction is... He wants to crack our power rankings. A uh, nice blazer, good shoes. Je- is our, are those jeans? Jeans. Okay. Okay. But I'm not sure. And and if, yeah. And I was like, Gonzalo wants to be in the top ten. Knew it. Do you think he listens? No. That's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> Between Georgie not listening to the call up, Gonzalo not Gonzalo, listening. Gonzalo, come on. Thank you for the call up. Come on, come on. Gonzalo. Come on. Okay, so I have an assignment for you then. I need you to monitor Gonzalo Pineda a little bit and see if this is like a thing that he does because I'm very intrigued now. I need to oh. I need to know why what the, you know, the methodology. What are we what are we it has working gone with here? In my head in the past that while I love the uh, team suits, they all walk in looking really Yeah, cool. very but sharp. Then that really commits the head coach to what they're wearing every home game and that's half that's half of your wardrobe for the season. Some yeah. guys love it. Jeff Lorenowitz, when he fills in for Moadu, 
I say, Jeff, you kind of look like look the like- players. And he says, well, that's because the only suit I own is my <laughs> suit. Like, you're on TV now. You got to buy a second suit. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, um, I love Jeff. But Lewis. on that note, just something that I'm not here for in any way, shape, or form, but I am here for the commitment that we saw in his most recent Instagram post is I just want to give a quick shout out to Miles Robinson. It's been so incredible to watch him. Susanna Collins. 17 of his 20 caps have come in this whirlwind of nine or 10 months to watch his rise. When Joseph goes down, Brad Guzan goes down, Ozzy Alonso goes down, he gets the car- captain armband to see him kind of take that level of ownership and then 14 minutes into that home game, um, rupture his Achilles was really hard to watch. Yet, you hate to see it. Uh, I know the World Cup, many people are thinking about, you know, you know he'll need the rest of the MLS season to rehab. Uh, I've seen a couple guys, Felipe Cardenas was one tweet about that. Well, people have done it in less than, you know, 150 Mm -hmm. days, which is when the World Cup is. I don't know if that's in store for Miles, but there's tons of guys who've had uh, injuries and they come back. I think of Adrian Peterson, former Viking, who had his best ever season after tearing his ACL. Um, But if there's anyone who's young enough and committed enough to crush it, I really hope that Miles can power through this. And I I am excited to watch his comeback. But I just wanted to send... Remember our Defender of Love on when we had him on a few months ago? I, I want know. to send I'm our sick. Defender of Love some love. Um, I am I am literally August. sick. It was um that was just such a such a gut punch. And I I just my my heart my heart broke into a million pieces because it's like it's a World Cup year. He has been integral. He has been integral on that US men's new, new, US men's national team. The the center back pairing with him and Walker Zimmerman. And when you look at the numbers, when you look at the stats. The team wins when those two are playing together. And so he was totally poised to be a big part of this. And for that personal heartbreak for him to be so close to playing in a World Cup is always like the ultimate goal for for a player. And to be this close and to um, almost assuredly be on that roster and for this to happen now is just, I mean, I can't even, I get a lump in my throat thinking about it because you work so hard. You work so hard to put yourself in this position and nobody works harder than Miles Robinson. And, but that also gives me hope because he is a, such an incredible athlete. And if there is anybody, anybody um, that can potentially come back uh, and and for for this tournament in Qatar um I believe it could be him and I you know obviously his health and um you know protecting him is the most important important thing I would never want him to come back sooner than he's ready but I wouldn't I wouldn't count him out just yet um no, so we're not counting that so we're just sending some quick love to Miles Robinson on on a happier note on a happier note I just wanted and our our final here for this I am so here for I'm so, well, as you know, we were in Nashville um, <laughs> last week for the opening of Judas Park, and I got to go to the the match. It was absolutely incredible. Also, shouts to Nashville for getting their first win at Judas Park this past weekend, a 2-0 result over RSL. You love to see it. Um, but I met a Nashville SC supporter named Dustin, who is a very big fan of the call-up, and uh, he told me this story, Jill. This is Justin. Hey guys. Uh, I'm a National SC fan, and tell me what you just told me about so, the during the, the During the day Friday, my third graders, I gave them an assignment to keep them busy, and I put the call up up on my whiteboard, and I played the call up. And they said, what is that? And I said, that's the call up, guys. That's our stadium. They're in our stadium right now, and it's amazing. That's the best and podcast in the history of yes. the world. Shout out, shout out to the call up. Shout out to the call up. Were we PG in that episode if he played it for a bunch of third graders? I'm pretty sure. I'm Me pretty sure there, we yeah. were. I think it was when we were at, yes. So he wanted to show his third graders, like, Nashville SC in the park, and he, he showed the, he showed the, call up to his shout class. out to and those third graders and shout out to mr justin we thank mr. you mr justin you are an absolute rock star what's on tap well may is asian american and pacific islander heritage month and major league soccer and its clubs are honoring aapi heritage throughout the month you can find out how you can get involved in your club and community um, just head on over to mlssoccer.com And Susanna Collins, May is Mental Health Awareness uh, Month. So it's important to take care of your mental health 
but also the mental health of those around you, strangers, people you love. Help is always available. And as a reminder, it is okay to not be okay and ask for help when you need it. So, Amen. Important reminder. Amen. No, nope, we will see all of you next week. Bye, guys. What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call-Up. And if you want more Call-Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call-Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?